A number of components within metrides, for example calcium aluminum rich inclusions, indicate that initially all the material in metrides was completely evaporated in a gas phase and within the protoplanetary disk. So this gas phase must have been quite hot. And this then started to cool down and the individual elements in the sequence started to condense from this um, large gas and then the elements finding each other form minerals and these also start to condense in a sequence from this gas. Now this kind of condensation can be modeled using thermodynamics and the result of such modeling is shown in this plot here. On the x-axis there is the increasing temperature to the right which means over here everything is basically in a gas state. And on the y-axis is the condensed fraction from a gas of minerals material and the gas initially had a Ci chondritic composition. So this is what is on the y-axis. So initially when everything was in the gas there's nothing that is condensed so everything is at zero. Then upon cooling the first minerals and elements to condense are the refractory elements and these are for example calcium, aluminum, titanium or the rare, rare earth elements. So the first minerals to form are for example corundum, hipponite, perovskite, galenite, spinel, ackermanite. These are all calcium aluminum rich minerals. And these minerals then constitute the CAIs. So this is all CAI material here that initially formed. And because calcium and aluminum have a abundance about an order of magnitude lower than magnesium silicon, all these CAI material here is also at least an order of magnitude below um, of the other minerals here. Now upon further, further cooling, um, the material that condenses at higher temperature will um, slowly be consumed by the next materials. Because what we are looking here at is equilibrium condensation, which means that all the material that forms and formed at higher temperatures is consumed again by the material that forms at lower temperatures. In fractional condensation this would to a certain extent not be the case, which means that material formed at higher temperature only to a certain extent reacts with later forming material and is just to a certain extent um, consumed by later forming material. But in equilibrium condensation, what we are looking here, all the material in this model, in this calculation, is consumed. And this is why the initial material is not um, no longer present in, 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 in later material. So then at a certain point, which is something around maybe 1400 Kelvin or so, the main elements start to condense. And the main elements are magnesium, silicon and iron. Magnesium and silicon building the silicates, olivine pyroxene primarily because magnesium silicon ratio is about 1. So high temperature condensate is olivine forms first, but because of the magnesium silicon ratio of 1, then a lot of pyroxene forms later. And the iron mostly condenses as metal or sulfide because the oxygen fugacity is very low, it's highly reducing um, and therefore most of the iron is in the metal phase. So this entire calculation of course depends on the ambient pressure here but also on the dust to gas ratio which is a measure for the oxygen fugacity. So a high dust to gas ratio would mean a lot of oxygen because there's a lot of dust and dust contains a lot of oxygen. Low dust to gas ratio means more reducing. Um, and these parameters shift, for example, this entire or would, would, would change, for example, the x-axis scaling here a little bit. Right, so at about 1400 Kelvin at typical pressures of maybe something 100 Pascal or so in the nebula, main elements start to condense. So first um, would be iron nickel metal, which is a lot. Then there's a lot of phosphoride initially because how we read this plot is that we draw a line here, say for example here, and then at this temperature here, this is the amount of metal that is condensed. This here is the amount of phosphoride that is condensed. This is the amount of pyroxene and it's the amount of 
anothide. So initially there's a lot of olivine, or forsterite, that condenses and then um, we basically move this line and then at say for example this temperature then this is the amount of iron nickel metal and if you compare these two this is quite similar so there's not a lot of change but a lot of forsterite reacts to Ansted height and so this is the forsterite so this is quite a decrease in forsterite abundance and there was no initially there was no Ansted height and so there's a lot of Ansted height forming and so on and then at low temperatures um, first the high temperature feldspar is forming which is the anorthite down here and then later which is calcium rich and then later the sodium rich albite forms at quite lower temperatures there uh, which is the low temperature form of of the anorthite and then another spinel so first is more aluminum rich spinel and more magnesium rich spinel that forms later so this is uh, this is the equilibrium condensation sequence here and this is a very good start to understand the, the condensation although certainly there was also fractional condensation because certainly not all the material completely reacted if this were the case we would not have any CAIs so first this is um, all CAI material here and then um, all the other material here is then made mainly chondrules and matrix material. So all this here is basically chondrule and matrix material which consists mainly of olivine, pyroxene, feldspar and blebs of um, metal and sulfide for example. And uh, so this is how equilibrium condensation roughly works and it's important to mem uh, memorize that initially these calcium aluminum rich, rich phases form and the metal, the olivine, the pyroxene and some feldspar and how the ratios change, first a lot of olivine, later more pyroxene and this would be the most essential parts of this equilibrium um, condensation here.